Um, you've talked about making CW more well known in the past interviews. How do you go about doing that? Well, first you decide to whom do you want to address your messages, or uh, it's not just everybody. Uh, so you you start segmenting your market, if you will. You start segmenting your audience into various into various groupings. So, for example, there'll be a there'll be a political group. There'll be a group that's a, that's important to the university because of the policies that are made in Olympia and the funding. You'll want to look at. Um, uh, advisors in high schools that help advise students. Of course, you want prospective students. You want employers because employers hire our graduates. So the first thing you do is you really sit down and you say, who are the key constituents that we want to influence? Then you do an analysis, and, we, and this has been done. This is this is what Linda Schockler and her department in public affairs has been doing now for a couple of years. Um, then, then you, um, and I give some examples in a moment of some of the programs that have hit various groups. Uh, then you sit down and you say, what's the best way of reaching those groups? What are they, uh, uh, how are they influenced? What, what, what materials do they read? What do they watch? Where do they go? And then you find ways of getting our message into those places. And you do that by several ways as well. Um, one is you buy ads and commercial time, and we're doing a lot of that now, uh, uh, depending upon the group. You, you go out and visit with them one-to-one, face-to-face, talk to them. Uh, you you be at events that they're at or sponsor events or participate in events that they are uh, that they are at. So you do you do it in a variety of ways depending. So you can almost think of it as who do I want to talk to? What's the how do I best do that? And then what's the message that I want to get to that particular group of, of people? Then you just design your communication programs to to achieve those goals. And so if you could. You know, what is your pitch to students considering coming to Central? Prospective students. Yeah, prospective students. I, uh, I tell them something I believe very passionately in. I believe we are the best undergraduate experience in the state of Washington. Um, and, and then I tell them why I think that, because I, I do. I, that's something I truly believe in. They're going to come, and to some extent it depends upon what they, I also tell them, let me even back up a little bit, I also tell them that if there are certain degree programs that you want to, to study in, don't come here because we don't have them. Uh, but if we have what you want, we're the best place for you to, to do that. And I'll tell them your section sizes are going to be smaller here than they are going to be at any other university in the, in the, in the state. Uh, our... Um, our faculty are more dedicated to teaching here than they are any place else uh, in the state. I would rank our facilities to be on par, if not better, than any of any of the other uh, universities in the state. And I, I tell them that I think the living environment here, both uh, in the residence halls, but it's a safe town. It's a town that's easy to uh, to navigate, to access. Uh, is also a very, very, there's lots and lots of outdoor activities here. So I tell them uh, it's really, if you start to analyze what you want to accomplish while you're at college, Central's the best place to do that. And then um, you have talked about the increasing enrollment here. Every year we seem to be growing. How do you adapt to that as a university? Well, well we have, I mean, we, we, we've adapted to that uh, uh, by you know teaching more and more more and more students with what we have, how are we going to adapt to that? Uh, is really the the important question here because you know, we've been under an incredible budgetary constraint for the last three years. Uh, we're now starting to see that that the state support is not declining. We had a very good um, year in or year session in Olympia this uh, this this past month. Uh, so what you, you you do is you you make sure that you you build the support services. For the students, you know, the advising, uh, the co-curricular, the dining, the living, but most importantly, you maintain that classroom environment, that, that instructor-student dynamic, and you make sure that there's, we have enough faculty uh, with enough time to manifest what I just said, that is to make this the best undergraduate learning experience in the state. And um, are there any plans? for, you know, moving forward, you know, with dorms or, you know, just for anything to adapt? Well, right now, you know, right, I mean, as we sit today, uh, we, we are finishing the, the, the new Bardo Hall, what, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, that 
the old Bardo is torn down and a new residence hall is going in its, in its place. That, in terms of our current planning, is the last major uh, construction of a residence hall. We'll renovate residence halls uh, each, each, each year. There'll be some renovation that's, that's, uh, that's going on, but we're not planning on building more uh, residence halls. And, and we won't until uh, the demand for residence halls is, is apparent to us, and right now it's, it's not. We're seeing a lot of uh, transfer students, for example, coming to Central, and so they're not coming as fresh. We have a lot of freshmen, but we also have a lot of non-freshmen coming to Central, both graduate students and upper division undergraduates. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes they don't want to live in a residence hall. They want to you know, live in, a, in an apartment or a house in the community. Has the number of transfer students increased? Also? It has, rather substantially. Yeah. Why do you think that is? I personally, I think it's, we don't have hard evidence to back up what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but I, I believe it's because the cost of education is going up so much, not just tuition, but the overall cost of attendance is going up. The residence halls, the food plan. I mean, it's basically leaving your home and going to another place and living is adding a lot of expenses. And then of course the tuition is going up. So I think students are seeing community college as an alternative pathway to a four-year degree. It's cheaper in those first two years. They, they can transfer those credits to Central uh, very nicely. With our dual admissions program, we're working as hard as we can to make sure that there are no wasted time at the community colleges, mm -hmm. that it's all productive in terms of transferring those credits to Central. So it's a cheaper pathway to a degree. I also think that we're also seeing uh, the number of students transferring from another four-year university to Central increase. And I think that is because the word is getting out that our our educational experience is better. You know, if you're, and I'm not casting any dispersions, it's just, it's a different model. But if you're s sitting in a section of seven or 800 students at one of the big research universities, and, and you go home in the summer and you start talking about that experience to someone from Central, and they said, well, you know, I had 35 in my freshman section. You're starting to realize that maybe you're not getting all that you're, uh, that you're paying for at that research university. And um, with transfer students and with students, prospective students, how do you try and persuade them to come here from out of Washington State? I think the same thing. I think the, 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 the exact same way that we do in-state students. You, you say to them that our program and our learning environment is as good or better than they are going to get at the you know, at, at a local public university. And that's pretty easy for us to do. Let's say you want to be an accountant. You know, it's the best accounting program in the Northwest, really bar none. So you want to be a music educator or, or a, a, a performer. Best music program in the Northwest. You want to study uh, uh, geology, absolutely superior. You want to go on to flight. You want to be an airline pilot, absolute best. So you just go out and talk to them about the experience here and it, if, again, if what we do meets their needs, uh, meets their desires, it's a pretty easy sell. Um, and so, I know I've asked you earlier what the biggest challenge is with your job, but other than the budget... <laughs> well, that's a big one, yeah. I know that's, that's, I know that's a know. very big one, <laughs> and the biggest. Uh, what other challenges come with the job? Oh, I think it's um, it's it's making the improvements that you know you want to make. It's it's making them as fast as you want to make them. It's not hard to make them. It's hard to make them quickly. And so, universities, higher education in general, you know, we we we, we kind of operate on annual cycles. So if you want to make an improvement in a certain program. Uh, you're doing it this year, it's you know, kind of hard to change in mid-course, so you kind of you get those changes in place and you do them next year. Uh, let's get a little better even, and you do it next year. And, and the reason you know, I get impatient, I guess, is, is, the, is my challenge, is impatience, is I, I know that I, if I wait a year, I just, you know, to make an improvement, I, there's, a, there's a, a year, there's a class of students uh, that, that haven't had the benefit of that improvement. So, you know, if we could have snapped our fingers for Bardo, for example, and said, new residence hall, well, there's a whole group of people we couldn't serve in that year that we didn't have Bardo here or the new residence hall. So I think that's the, the, the other challenge is, 
is patience. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, kind of going off that, is there anything you guys are getting ready for next year that would, you know, that this this group of seniors yeah, are going to miss? Are going to miss? Oh, I have to think uh, about uh, about that. We're we're making some minor uh, changes to, to, to graduation to make it a little to try and make it a little bit more personal for students. I think we'll get some of the changes made for this graduating class, mm -hmm. but we want to. To, to make it even a more special experience for uh, students. We're uh, uh, putting greater emphasis in our Douglas Honors College program. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be an important uh, uh, thing for students who, who uh, we were looking to make some uh, improvements in our athletic facilities. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have two new buildings, academic buildings, that are in the, in the design stages, a new science building. Uh, which will have wonderful things for those students, and actually a new communication building, mm -hmm. uh, which would give students like you this incredible uh, learning environment for you know digital media, traditional media, convergent media. Mm -hmm. So very, I think those are the ones that come to mind uh, the quickest. Um, what are the changes for graduation to make it more personal? Well, in the in the short run, we're, we're looking to. Have you graduate by by college? Now you know you kind of graduate by. Uh, I mean, excuse me, even by department, and then and then by college. So that, and then your your then your faculty will know you're coming, and your faculty can be down at the. You know, now I'm at the base. I would call base of the ramp. You know, that little ramp you walk down at graduation. I'm down there shaking your hand, and while I love to shake, you know, a couple thousand hands, it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I'm not the one who taught you for four years, so I'd like to have your faculty down there, but you know, they'd have to stand down there as long as I do, and all of them would. Mm -hmm. So if we can organize you a little bit better in your line, uh, we, could, we can have your faculty waiting for you down there. And then mom and dads can also say, you know, here he comes or here she comes, because mm -hmm. we'll say now graduating the Department of Communication students, and you know, mom, dad, grandma, aunts and uncles can, can kind of perk out. That's one thing. Yeah. And we'll have bigger plans down the road, but that's, that's in the short run what we're looking to do. All right. Um, I know you've told me in your spare time, whenever you have <laughs> it, you like working on your car. Right. What else do you like to do in whatever spare time? Well, what I like to do and or what I do do. You no, know, what I like to do, I love to play golf. Uh, which I played, I think, five times in three years, so there's not a lot of spare time there. Uh, I like to cook. Uh, I like to read. Um, I get actually more reading done than I get anything else done, because you can grab that in little half-hour chunks, uh, which is you know, usually what my spare time... Uh, I, I used to love to garden, but I now live in a university house, so it's a little harder to... to um, uh, to do to do gardening and I really like to spend time with uh, family and friends and I and I do get to do that because in this job it's a very social job so mm -hmm. we have lots of people in the house and you know sometimes it's official work and I it's people I don't know and sometimes it's official work and it's people I do know mm -hmm. and then it's like sitting down with with family and friends so uh, that's probably the thing I do the most and um, what are some of the things you like most about Ellensburg you know, this, I'm going to use a word here, that I, that I'm, then I'm going to explain it. What I like about Ellensburg is it's a very authentic place. Um, I, I grew up in California, but then early in my, you know, my life, I, I moved away to go to college, and I spent most of my time uh, back on the East Coast. And there seems to be more pretense there, more concern about the clothes you're wearing, more concern about kind of your social standing. Um, not more. It's, it's not that it's a fake place, but it's there's a, there's a little bit more styling out there. Here, there, there. This seems to be a place where people, you know, kind of they act who they are, and it's take me or leave me, and that's okay. And I I, I like that. I like the casualness of the place. Uh, there aren't many places you can't go in a in a, in a, in a case of a of a man. You can't go in a in a shirt, pair of jeans. Flip flops in the summer, you know, shoes in the winter. It's a very casual uh, folks, and for a small town, uh, which we clearly are, there's a there's a pretty good amount of you know restaurants, places to go, art galleries, and then I'd say you know lastly, but certainly not least important, it's a fantastic place to get outside. And, I mean, but if you're walking in the mountains or you're uh, biking on the flat ground or you're 
you know, uh, rafting or fishing down the down the Yakima River. It's pretty pretty cool place to be. And then, I know some of the songs you like, and Big Lebowski for movie. Yeah. Do you get to watch any TV? I get to watch some TV, not too much. I, I sometimes, if I'm just kind of at the end of the day, I'm just kind of done. You know, I'm tired. I'll sit down and, and watch, uh, you know, watch a half hour of TV. Not, not too much. And what do you watch? I almost, I, I watch John Stewart. Yeah. Uh, John Stewart's kind of my guy. Uh, I watch the Colbert Report. I tend to like Stewart more than Colbert. Um, I. Uh, uh, I like watching when I can find a good one. I like watching uh, some of the documentaries. Just the other night, I watched the document. I, I do a lot of, um, uh, in my language, taping. Uh, a lot of DVRing, I guess, is the, the term now. So there was there was a documentary on the construction of the Grand Coulee Dam. I actually watched that last night. Uh, so I'll watch that sort of stuff. In sports, I'll watch. I'll carve a little time out on Sunday to catch a baseball game or a football game. What sports? Baseball, football, baseball, for the football. Most, yeah, for the most part. Are you yeah. a basketball fan? Though? I'm a basketball fan, but I, I tend not to watch basketball on television. I mean, I get I get to as many of the men's and women's games, you know, for the for the Wildcats, but I'm not a real big television basketball guy. For whatever reason, it just doesn't quite click in that medium. Uh, baseball, I love baseball, so I'll watch it in any format I can. And then I actually think football's better on TV than it is in in, in person because of all the replays and mm-hmm. and close-ups that you just, you know, if you go buy a ticket at the, at the, at the Seahawks, you're not going to get a, a real close-up of a catch or a block. So uh, I like watching it on television. All right. Well, that's all I have. Thank you for, thanks for the interview. Thanks for the time. Yeah, no, thank you very much.